Hello, Hockeys Worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. I'm going to look this time at uh, all sorts of possibilities that you could do if you had a, a tower. Say if you move into a house that has an old 35-foot tower or something like that. Um, the f first thing, um, well, let me introduce this guy and then I'm going to talk about tower safety. Okay, this uh, comes from Ricky Kusick and um, he doesn't give his call sign, but he says, Hello, Dave. I'm a big fan. I am practicing on the ARRL website to take my tech and general ham license in less than a month. Great. Very good. I congratulate you. And good luck on the tests. I'm also blind, and that leads me to my question. I have a 35-foot tower with a CB antenna currently on it. I would like to switch that out maybe for a vertical ham antenna that could get 40, 20, 10, and 6, or maybe even a couple more. I would like your opinion on the type of antenna that I could get to put on top of my tower that would help me with long-distance communications. I would love to talk to people around the world, and I know that would probably be best done with a horizontal antenna. Actually, that's usually people talk about verticals in that context. If you're going to have a unity gain antenna like a dipole or a vertical, the vertical will get you the longer distance context. That is ham conventional wisdom. Okay, I'm not going to say it's best practice, but it is conventional wisdom. Okay. Uh, is there a horizontal antenna that could go on the top of the tower that you could suggest? Oh, yeah. Um, I saw a video of yours talking about an MFJ 2010, but that one is 66 feet, and I don't know if you could connect that to the tower in a tree, or should I stick with a vertical? And if so, what vertical antenna you suggest that I could set atop a 35-foot tower with 10 feet of mast sticking out of it? So we're up to 45 feet. Okay, I'd appreciate any help you can offer. By the way, thanks for the knowledge you pass on to me and others. I will soon be a licensed amateur radio operator and look forward to all the contacts I can make around the world. And thank you. Well, very good. And uh, Ricky, we look forward to you passing your tests. Now, you can't see this, but I'm going to draw this for the other viewers. We've got a tower. Okay, and it's got all these cross pieces and things like that. And it's 35 feet. This is a common tower height. And then sticking out of the top of that is a 10-foot mast. And this is 35-foot tower. Now the first question that I've got to ask has to do with the condition of the tower. Towers degrade over time, and if they are not maintained, at least annually, they really degrade over time. The tower is probably made of steel. It might be aluminum, but either way, it's subject to corrosion. I suspect it's made of steel. Um, so you could, well, what I would suggest you do is call, look in the phone book, and let me see if I can find this for you. Look under radio. You are not real estate. Okay. And here's what you see, and we don't have too many here. Radio communications equipment and systems. See, this is in the phone books, yellow pages. We've got a couple here. Two-way communications, and uh, it's in uh, Grand Junction. And two-way communications, another one that looks like it's the same place, okay, with just, uh, in fact, it's got the same phone number. They're in there twice. But uh, 
These are the people who put up towers uh, and know people who put up towers. Uh, it's amazing how many towers there are. Uh, it used to be radio towers, but now it's cell phone towers. And a huge uh, industry has developed around putting up towers for cell phones. And they can put up towers very quickly and so on. Call these people and get someone to come inspect the tower. Okay? You want a professional's opinion on the tower. You don't want anybody climbing that tower until they have assurance from a tower engineer that it is safe to do so. You've got all the guy wires to inspect. You've got uh, the tower itself, the foundation, um, all of the bolts in between, whether there's corrosion or rust or whatever it may be. Towers can kill people. And every year we hear of a ham or two who falls to his death from a tower. So when you have a group of hams come over, your club, to put any antenna up, set up, or give one person uh, the job of safety observer. And that person's job, besides calling out anybody who's behaving poorly, his sole job is to call 911 in case something bad happens. Nine, not 911, 911, 911. We're supposed to say 911 because uh, somebody died because some kid uh, tried to call 911 and he said he couldn't find the 11 button on the phone. So make it 911. Um, and then you can put this up. So let's take a look quickly at uh, some antennas that we can put on top of this. Now towers and beams go together. A beam is an antenna with horizontal elements, usually three or four, like this. They're not cheap. Uh, they're somewhere in the range of 400 for a little dinky one, up to over $1,000, and that's just for the antenna. Okay, and then they need a rotator. So you've got the antenna and the rotator, and the rotator and the control head for the rotator down in your shack. Sometimes these are sold separately. And so they'll get you for $400 for a cheap rotator and another $400 for the control, plus maybe $600 for the antenna. You can see the prices go up very quickly. Now, one of the disadvantages with the beam antenna is that they usually only work 20, 10, um, and uh, 15, and 17, and and uh, 12 meters, okay. They don't work on 40 unless you get a huge beam, okay. And your 35 foot tower won't support that. So um, that's one thing you can look at. That's a horizontal antenna. Now we can go to the opposite of this. That's the expensive solution. We can go to the opposite of this and take your um, 2010, which is 66 feet long, each leg is about 33 feet. And the thing is, you could mount it as an inverted V. You would have to have an insulated spot above here because the actual coax comes out at the one third point down here. But that could just loop up and over like that, okay? And if you got, uh, and that will work on uh, 40, 20, 10, and 6. Okay, and this spot, the, where we are in the sunspot cycle, these are the two bands you really want to play with, and this sometimes when the band opens up. Sometimes 6 opens up too. Now, if you don't go with the reference antenna, you can just uh, take like the myantennas.com and this is about 50 feet, about 50 feet, I don't know, it's plus or minus. This is where the, the ballon is 
and this is where your feed line comes off. And then this goes up here and comes back down. Here you want to attach it to a tree or something so, so that people don't trip over it or catch their neck on it. Um, and this inverted V formation works really well uh, with that particular antenna. And that'll give you a little touch of 80 meters. Uh, it'll give you 40 and on up to, and I think 30. Yeah, it, it does. Not 60. It does not do 60 on up to 10. Okay. That's a relatively inexpensive antenna. This is what I'm giving away this month, by the way. Uh, it's the September giveaway for uh, 2021. Okay, other things that you could do are maybe to hang your 2010, which is the reference antenna, um, to the house or something like that. And you could either bring the, the coax down there or there, depending which orientation you put up. It doesn't matter. Um, and then you're not using anything on the tower to actually radiate. Now, if you really want to experiment, you can put a gamma match in here. It's a capacitor, actually and load the tower itself uh, and that's the pus and the ground is here and you you'd have to put a tuner right here because what you're doing is loading the tower and on every band the loading's going to change and it's going to be a wildly high swr right here so if you have no transmission line then there is no uh, place to uh, throw away heat and then you run a 50 ohm transmission line out to the tuner plus whatever control cables it wants. Okay, so that gives you lots of opportunities. I guess I should mention also, there's your towers, the sloper. Um, if this were the 2010, the coax could come off here. This is the roof. Or actually, if your roof is tall enough, it could go almost straight across. Okay, so there's lots of ideas. You've got lots of things you can do with that tower. And if the tower actually is in good shape, you can look forward to putting up some sort of a tribander beam or something like that at some point in the future, once you get used to radio. Now, you've not yet passed your test, and I'm going to make the same recommendation that I make to everybody who is in the pretest. A position in ham radio to please forego the temptation to purchase equipment about ham or having to do with ham radio like antennas and radios until you actually have passed your test. The reason I say that is because I've seen too many people for whatever reason buy expensive equipment and then never get their license. All sorts of things can happen in the meantime, from um, somebody changing jobs or a child comes along or, um, you know, a medical problem, anything. I've seen it happen just about every way possible. So um, go ahead and keep studying uh, that, uh, those uh, books, the technician book and the general book. And of course, you know I have videos that supports every chapter in there. If you go to ke0og.net, note the .net, .net, slash training, that will take you to the technician videos. If you put in slash general, that will take you to the general videos. You put in extra, and it will take you to the amateur extra videos. Okay, now, um, we had a drawing uh, last month for a book that uh, went out to a lucky recipient. Uh, this is the, the actual drawing. Um, I'm filming this in late August. The actual drawing is going to be tomorrow evening, which will be the 26th of August, which is not the day this video came out. Here's what I've received already um, in the way of things to put into the drawing. 
Okay, I want to uh, introduce you to a new feature of this channel. It's relatively new. My study is filled with books and gadgets that I've accumulated from having this channel, and it's time to thin the herd, so to speak. I'm announcing uh, the second giveaway. This is giveaway number two. Uh, that's one object given away. Um, my first, or second giveaway to hams in the USA. The item to be given away is an antenna. It's the My Antenna, My Antennas, Enfed Half Wave 80 through 10 1K. That's the high power version, higher power version. Okay, it consists of a whale of a ballon and then somewhat over 100 feet, 130 feet of uh, wire on the thing. And you can uh, bend it around uh, any way that you want. Um, in here, if you read this closely, it uh, is really talking about uh, putting it up as an inverted V. And that's what I did, and it worked really, really well. So here's how the giveaway works. It's totally free for you to enter. Send a postcard, a QSL card, or a simple one-page letter by snail mail to P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. On whatever you send, make sure to include the giveaway number, in this case, number two, so I don't get them in the wrong pile. Okay, number two. Now, make sure that you also include your name, call sign, and shipping address. Please also include your phone number in case I have questions. Please, nothing else. Though, if you want to send a picture of you and your, your station, I may be able to show these during the live stream. Note that I pay for the shipping of the antenna to whoever um, whoever's name I draw out of the pot. And uh, so it's all totally free to you. I hope to do something like this every month. Note that after the drawing, all of the entries will be discarded and no information will be kept or transcribed. And by discarded, I mean destroyed, okay? So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you may do so by going to decastlercom support it's got things there like a tip jar and Patreon and so on. And picking a way that you find most helpful. Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like. And don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 73.